constantly picked. He is first picked as well. He's been first pick material for a lot of the teams so far. Slada of the patch. People are still picking Slada, so... Slada seems just getting banned. He's, oh. He gets banned, but the thing is... Right, who else doesn't crushes the ground? You know, you're thinking, mm, <laughs> we need someone like that. Runs fast, hits the stunts in an AOV. Stuns. Yeah. Technically, Slada is... I would say Slada is still the superior, yeah. superior hero just because of the minus armor. Outside of that, though, before we go into the draft, I actually want to hear about... Your opinion on who you're actually thinking that's going to win. From what I've actually felt so far, I think Bazaar Youth is going to be able to take this game off of Geek Fam just because yeah. we've seen that the team got a lot of synergy. They know how to work together. They know the limitations mm -hmm. of each player. So they mesh really well together. And we've seen their team fight execution. It's been pretty good so far. Uh, what do you think? I, I think I've, I agree with you. I think the, um, the biggest thing about Bazaar Youth is that they're on a roll. They're actually crushing it 3-1. And uh, Geek Fam are slightly below that. Maybe at a, I didn't actually see the scoreboard, but they're a little bit behind. Uh, they dropped two games, I believe. So slightly behind the score. Bazaar, you've got to be feeling pretty good about themselves. Uh, the only advantage uh, I think Geek Fam has is that they've got players who have more experience mm -hmm. than a lot of the Bazaar yeah, Youth Yeah, some players. of these names, Rodgy, Strionix, uh, like old-timers almost. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, the Bazaar Youth guys, I saw Xiang. He has been playing outstanding thus far. Uh, when as well, I think he's the guy with the experience, if I'm not wrong. When, yes, yeah, yes. He's the, he's, he the old, he's, the, he's the old guy on the team, out of the youth, uh, leading the youth to victory. And uh, they get themselves an invoker, which I think is a solid, solid pickup. Lone Druid, people are saying he's OP. I'm not convinced he's OP. I think he's strong. Maybe there are many are just, answers to him. Yeah, I yeah. think teams aren't utilizing the answers for the Lone Druid as of yet. There are still weaknesses to him. It's I just... mean, the previous game, Clutch oh, took, uh, took out a Lone Druid lineup, so... Exactly. You call it OP, I call it... Yeah. Adaptability, right? Teams yeah. just not adapting. Um, but, so uh, bizarre you though. Definitely going to be looking towards initiators, like um, anti-mage. I think earlier on I was saying like the anti-mage pick was because they, he could jump onto a lone druid. A juggernaut with a blink dagger would work as well. Ember Spirit is another popular pick. I do like I, seeing this Phantom Lancer band though. Yeah, we saw the Phantom Lancer pick earlier today, and oh mm -hmm. god, that... that Torn to shreds. Exactly. Um, so, Smart Band coming out from Bazaar Youth. I want to sort of evaluate what Bazaar Youth has picked up. Now, we've seen a little bit of a couple of teams, I suppose, picking up the Rubik. Mm -hmm. Now, this Weaver. early, though. Now, why would you pick a Rubik this early? He's not normally first pick material. You, 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 no, you, actually, he, he is, first of all, because he's like a safe pick you don't really reveal too much about your draft and uh, it also prevents the counter pick that comes out from picks like weaver warlock you know things with big ultimates or maybe make them second guess those picks as well right because yeah. of the spell steal that's right you, yeah. you make them second guess the big ultimates uh, i think one of the biggest one two combos was the rubik weaver because you don't want to give Sukuji away to rubik most of the time but uh weaver's banned out in this case so he's not the factor uh, but now, like you said, you know, it's a deterrence. It's better to pick the Rubik first and make them second guess picking these big fight ultimates rather than picking them into the Enigma or picking the Rubik into the Enigma or something like that. Yeah. You know, it's better that they don't even consider it. Then you have to try and fight it. Yeah, that makes sense. But uh, ultimately, I think Rubik's a very well balanced hero. It's in a good spot right now. He's gotten a few buffs to the Null Field, he's got buffs to the Mana Cost, the Fate Bolt, making his early game rotations a little bit more fluid. A little bit more uh, easy to maintain. The only thing that didn't change is that he still needs heroes to follow up the initiation, right? That's still the, the slight weakness of Rubik pre-6. Mm -hmm. And pre that's why he's a ganker, you know? You, yeah. you, you always want to pair up with someone. You, don't, like a, you don't kill someone alone. He's like a disruptor, right? A hero that provides mm -hmm. more utility than anything else to the team. Yeah. Yeah. Disruptor and Rubik are definitely the most one of the, the more flexible supports uh, that you can fit up into a lot of lineups. The uh, instant stun is really good as well. The null feel actually often overlooked. Uh, for its potential to resist a huge amount of damage coming out of those team fights, and uh, I, I like it. I, I don't think I, I think even Invoker doesn't like his spells getting stolen no, by a Rubik. A lot of Rubik yeah. uh, Invoker spells are really good for Rubik. And uh, pretty much anything Invoker throws at Rubik is like I, I want that I want that spell I want that spell I want that spell. Hey, I have it. I have... Maybe you can almost say like maybe Sunstrike's the least useful of all that. That is saying something. You can still use yeah, it. Yeah, because Sunstrike is like one of the better ones already. Yeah. Uh, but right now, I think Bazaar, they might just go for something safer. I'm thinking Ogre, deny it from the Lone Druid himself. Able to also apply pressure in some mm -hmm. of those lanes too is just so damn tanky. Yeah. 
I think Ogre is a Ogre, really good pick here. Ogre and Rubik would be a really strong dual lane to push out the centaur. Not dual lane, tri lane supports. Yeah. So that the centaur is not going to be able to get anything in lane. Because we then, have seen, right, some teams, they run the centaur, but he tries to stay yeah. in lane for as long as possible. We're profits. Yeah. Like Technically, you were. You were the one that did it. Yeah, don't leave me hanging. There you go. Yeah. MMR for, for Lysander. Plus, plus 25 MMR. Casting MMR. <laughs> Road to winter. Road to... That's a very long road. I would stop right now. I'm, 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 I'm have, I have the confidence. I have the confidence. I've been secretly listening to his analysis. I'm like, mm, I got that. But maybe I've just been watching too much Dota, or maybe Ogre is just too good. A predictable pick as well. Yeah, very predictable pick. Not going to take all the credit for that, but... Uh... Keeper needs supports. Now that we're mm -hmm. on the topic of supports, they've only picked a Centaur and a Lone Druid. They need two supports to complement their picks, and they definitely need heroes that are going to be able to either play defensively or create space. Yeah. Um... Coral is very popular. I, I don't know if it will fit into this lineup. There's no, it's really popular. But two of the biggest steroids for Lone Druid are actually taken out now. Invoker and Ogre. Uh, oh, I, was gonna, I was about to say Don't Crystal Maiden. I was but... going to say Crystal Maiden as well, just because it gives Geek Fam a little bit more aggressive, mm -hmm. more presence on the map because they have more mana to spend. They need less regen, they're able to stay in lane, and it means that whoever's paired up with the Crystal Maiden can keep roaming as long as they have the HP pool for it. In theory. In theory, but I, again. I, I think a Crystal Maiden can be really easily punished because uh, I think we saw in the last game where, because you know, the whole reason why I thought the last game was a loss for Clutch was because they picked that Crystal Maiden and then they had this Legion Commander Coral Nightmare of the lane against them. And the Crystal Maiden was constantly getting nuked and pinned down well, along with her safe laner. So she didn't have the opportunity to roam or anything. And then she, she really fell out of her power power zone or is that like the, the area the time of the game where she's her the best peak. yeah the, the time of the game where she's actually at her best and uh, i thought you know you waste out that crystal maiden yeah you get the mana but you really want to have that roaming in and because of that constant pressure if bizarre you've like uh bring another hero that like ogre and x and pressure lane for example your crystal maiden will not be able to gank or roam as much as she would like to so it does it remains to be seen what geek fam actually does pick to complement the berlin's aura I feel like they need another support that that's actually similar to an Ogre Magi, it feels. They need something that's going to be able to sit with her, mm -hmm. but at least be someone that can soak the damage while she sits behind them, right? As a support. Who, who deals with X? Who deals with X? Yeah, who deals with X? It's a, it's a question that needs to be answered. Is this a lone druid mid? Okay, uh, that's bad, right? Bad rider deals with X pretty well. Um, is this a mid bat or a mid druid? I think it's a mid druid. Uh, bat will probably be like the position four. We saw the roaming geek fam bat earlier on. It was very strong with that phantom lancer. Feels greedy. They were greedy. They were rewarded. I mean, it could work. There's crystal maiden aura to keep the bat riders jungling more. Um, keep the jung the jungling more of fluid. Yeah, but I think it's definitely going to be another support bat. Rod keep played the bat. I don't think he'll be getting beyond god light again, but. Uh, <laughs> You can dream. You can dream, yeah. It definitely look towards a first blood or something. Very quick ban by Bazaar Youth, by the way. They get rid of the Ember Spirit <laughs> straight away. So, seems like they just want to get rid of Geek Fam's comfort hero at this point. Just saying, okay, Ember Spirit off the table. We do not want counter push. Do we Do we see a silencer coming out? Uh, or one more? Right, well, what are Bazaar Youth lacking? They're la lacking a safe lane. Okay. Uh, Luna? Luna is popular. Luna's not too bad. Jug. Oh, yeah, yeah. Why do not? I always forget about Jug. Jug is the hero to go to. He's right? like the bread and butter hero, but people just forget about him because they know he exists. No, no, you don't expect him to be not banned or picked at this stage. But uh, Geek Fam get last pick. I know. Bazaar Youth get last pick here. Geek Fam will have to pick their last hero, and then, yeah, Bazaar Youth will get the last say to wrap things mm. up. Um... They need something that has some sort of burst outside of that centaur. They're gonna achieve any sort of ganks. Like you're running a bat rider. What's the follow up of a geek fam? Legion they need... Kappa. <laughs> they need someone that's able to provide nukes. Like I, I like Skyrim Mage, but that guy's never. They're picked. never gonna pick Skyrim Mage, Lysander. You stop that right now. I like Skyrim Mage. It's just my thing. We could see something unconventional here for geek fam. Silence is good. I think Silencer is decent. Uh, maybe Magnus. Nah, not Magnus. But no. Silencer is decent. I don't know if Geek Fam runs Silencer. 
Do you go for any of the? Oh, okay, oh, okay. okay. That that fits what they needed. They needed some sort of burst slash damage, and that's where the shadow fiend comes in handy. He's Raises. gonna have a tough time against ogre. Tough. tough Unless time. Crystal Maiden sits in the middle lane with him. Yeah, but Crystal Maiden versus ogre, ogre still wins, I think. So Crystal Maiden is not a good babysitter ish compared not, to ogre. Not the ogre is superior. Yes. And oh, oh, we whip out the fish. Nah, that's a good hero against Batrider. Not just uh, against Batrider. <laughs> Pretty much whole all of Geek Fam's lineup. They don't yeah. have the lockdown. Uh, they don't have the appropriate lockdown to keep us locked down and the damage to kill him off before he gets a shadow dance. Yeah. Uh, X as well. The call just too strong um, against the slot is on their team. So. Well, it's, uh, it's definitely going to be tricky for Geek Fam. I think uh, they might have got an drafted here with their Slark. Even we didn't see this, one, see this one coming. Shadow Fiend, though, has a lot of burst damage. You can look to burst the Slark down before he pops the pops his ability. Assuming, as you, you can said, still push. assuming the Shadow Fiend gets the levels that he needs, and you mentioned before, laning is not going to be easy with the Ogre Magi. I've got to agree with you there. Yeah. I, so... I feel like this game could be a really fast stomp, or we could have one of those extended ones where we get to see the full power of Slark. What's the compromise here for Geek Fam? Do they maybe change up the lanes, put, put the safe lane instead of that mid lane? Because mm. you said the Druid could go middle. Yeah, the Druid could go middle, yeah. I feel like he would have a better chance up against the dual lane, if anything. Yeah, that is definitely true. Shadowfin doesn't agree with you, so no. he goes mid. Have to see how he goes, though. Teehee needs backup. Unless, by some godforsaken reason, he gets a good uh, a good laning phase in the mid lane, which... First if blood would help. First blood would help. But that would be a big screw up on the side of Team Bazaar Youth if they let that happen. Who is first bloodable? Uh, no one except for Rubik. Probably you, Rubik. Rubik or Invoker caught on the wrong side of things, but... Probably not gonna happen, but as we say that, we probably just doom one of them to die. And uh, we're gonna have uh, both sides going up deep into enemy territory to drop the wards, so no biggie. So Bazaar Youth gonna have WL on the Ogre Magi, we have Wen, Boss on X, we have Xu Yuan on the Invoker, Yang on the Rubik, Xiang on the Slot, and uh, did I miss anybody? No, I did not. Okay, on the side of Geek Fam, on the Dire side today, we've got Crimson gonna be playing the Crystal Maiden, putting an aggressive Observer Ward out just to keep an eye on the Shrine location uh -oh. as a uh whole -oh. runs right into an Ogre. Ignite is there and they've got backup as well. Sunstrike straight away from this oh, Invoker. Wow. Now Body Block from the bag, gonna try and keep Crimson alive. It does work. And uh, Crimson, he's gonna have to go back to Fountain. He ate the Tango, but. At least he's gonna be okay. No he's gonna, first he's gonna shrine up, I think. Uh, would you want to use the shrine this early? You could save it for the lanes. This shrine. This one. Yeah, you could still save it for the lanes. Oh, well, we'll see. We'll see. Alright, uh, Rodkey. Okay, let's get Crimson. It's gonna Not help Crimson. block it out. Uh, by the way, let's finish up the lanes really quickly. Show Nick's gonna oh, yeah. be playing our lone druid middle lane. Oh, we have Roggy just keeping it warm here for Teehee, who's gonna be on our Shadow Fiend. Uh, T Reggie playing the Batrider, by the way. And finally, Velo on the Centaur War Runner, who. Yeah, he's gonna have a hard time in that bottom lane. Pretty much. Uh, when you have no levels, Slot, Rubik, pretty nasty to deal with. But if he does get a few levels on board, he might be able to resist their advances, so to speak. Mm. <clears throat> we'll, look at, we'll look at this mid lane and see how. It, I think this is where all the. All the good or bad things will stem from this game. So it looks like it's going to be a pretty good block here from T. He's going to manage to get the creep wave mostly towards his side next to the tower. So at least he feels safe to grab those first oh, couple of hits. And we see the bat rider come in for that assistance. Going to go for the deny. <laughs> wow, nicely done there. Tee. He denying the range, uh, the range creep, a big deal, especially for that creep, first creep wave will prevent that level two from happening. And uh, right oh. now we have a two on two. Rochi's gonna be annoying, especially with the Crystal Maiden, or I could just keep throwing down the Nate Bomb stacks. Yeah, Ogre immediately knows that he's uh, screwed. It's not meant to be here. Yeah, the SF already getting a couple of denies in. Four and three, this Invoker um, getting out CS here with zero and one. Tihi outlaning this guy. Oh god, clearly. 
the souls are uh, starting to rack up, and once the souls get uh, get to a comfortable level, the SF can actually hold his ground against an invoker. And uh, things are getting rough here for Mr. C A N. I don't know. Wrap around from Shuan. Roji. Trying to go for a backstab here, oh, and then possibly going to get the axe. Yeah. Napalm stacks are going to keep him slowed enough. They're going to cool him up. And yeah, that'll be first blood going their way, and that's Shionix getting that as well. Rough axe. Not as tanky as you would like to be in the early levels. Probably wasn't expecting the rotation here from Roji. Just keep, he keeps on throwing the napalm stacks, and it just keeps oiling up Bazaar for a kill. Mm -hmm. So if you're a Bazaar... Do you just sack when and try to compromise in another lane? Because this clearly is not working. Yeah, and Centaur has got seven last hits. What? They haven't put pressure onto him, it seems. They just sort of yeah, focused what on the when CS you, pushing. When you pull a support away from a supposed try lane. Oh, oh Invoker. Bear. Let's be careful here. Shuan. Oh, a long race will do the job. No, it's going to be 20 HP. Meanwhile, top lane went okay. actually got the last hit on the lone druid there. Right. Crystal Maiden ticking, and uh, she will drop there. The freeze, not going to be enough to take down when the very nicely timed Sunstrike. Oh, but he does go down to the Shadow Fiend. See, ooh, gonna really enjoy that. Well, we talked about getting a kill and getting those max souls. There top you lane, go. Phoenix goes down. He had no bear for 60 seconds because when killed it, and he might not live here from the bat rider. One more last hit will be enough. He's trying to oil him up and wants to chase oh, him down the one. Stick charges. Oh, God. And uh, now WL is going to have to run away. The ogre will survive that. A fire blast just a ticking down a little bit. A sun strike. Oh, barely. But a very nice play. Well, very nice use of uh, de-aggroing to actually keep themselves healthy. And now when, as well as we, uh, WL will actually keep themselves topped up with the shrine. Teehee. Getting that That's first right. kill in the middle lane, definitely going to be happy. Roger going back to Fountain as well with that death. I will say already, three minutes in, we've already had a couple of nail uh, nail biting ganks mm -hmm. compared to what we've seen for the rest of the day. More or less, some of them have just been very standard rotations, but this time, everyone's playing hyper aggressive. And Shonix, he finally gets to summon his bear, so he actually had to play super defensively when that was down. But when he's gonna oh. abuse the fact that the bear just came Sun up. Strike. Oh god, Shonix. He may just melt to all this damage over time. Getting so close. It looks like he should live because he is eating a tango. But uh when he's got has he got another call? Two seconds left on the call, but he's gonna burn by the time that actually happens, I believe. So No, he's gonna yeah. survive. And uh, the Ogre running in, he is napalmed up, there is still fire around now, Crimson looking for a kill there, they might just go for the Ogre, but I think it's a little ambitious. Nope, just kidding. They're gonna be able to take him down, the stick charge is gonna be keeping there, do they get enough? Oh. No! They stay alive, and with that fire blast as well, again with the constant rotation of the damage, when will actually give his life up with another overextension. The Batrider has the magic stick charges as well, so wasn't really accounting for that. And uh, very close kills all the way, all the way so far. Again, these ganks up top, they've really been something so far. Five minutes in, sitting on a score of five, so we're sitting on about five, oh about one kill a minute so far. Yeah, Xiang is getting destroyed in his bottom lane by Velo. He might actually die here, to be really careful, the double edge. A Almost level six on Velo as well. Threat. Yeah, he has to be very careful. I think they missed their window to bully him. Ooh, six is up, and Xiang has no... Shadow Dance for another level. He has no leap as well. I think I think if Velo was counting the cooldowns, he could have jumped for that one. Uh, but now the salve as well as the raindrops do come out. And Yang will not be able to... Oh, Velo will Ooh. not be able to kill him off. They want to punish him. Oh, they got him. They leap on him. There's a Sun Strike. Gotta dodge that. He doesn't walk back into it. But now it's going to be another Fire Blast and they should have enough to take him down. So Ogre finally returns the lane he was supposed to be in and uh, gets the kill on the board. That one kill won't salvage the lane for Shang though. For, for them to salvage Shang's lane, they might have been. They might even have to keep the ogre magic here. He's top here. CS though. He's top CS, but look at the centaur CS. He is above the shadow fiend CS. Yeah, enjoying life uh, <laughs> in that off lane. You know, there there are off lanes and then there are these off lanes. Exactly. Uh, ogre is back to make life a uh, living hell for SF, but... But the, m the mindset here for Bazaar Youth, right? They're letting a centaur get this farm, right? What is the payoff for giving the centaur farm? 
They they were hoping the X get some space as well, but uh, SF has won his lane, and uh, I don't know. It's it's not looking good. Xiang doesn't have Shadow Dance just yet. You just want to be a little bit more patient. Then you should be able to get it. But Yang, oh, they're going to run into him again. The Ignite comes out. And yeah, Xiang is looking for it. He has Shadow Dance now. He wants to go for it. And Velo running the right way. The double edge is there. Did he get out of there? Nope. Sun Strike oh, is there. No. And yeah, everything goes to ham. Stampede on cooldown as well. So it's going to be down for 80 seconds. Mm -hmm. Not available for Geek fam as well which i feel is more of a loss if he died but still had stampede it still would have been pretty good for geek fam they may have been able to apply some pressure with it well invoker now getting quite a few assists on with the with that sunstrike already he has been he's been very proactive with getting those sunstrikes and i think it's just what I was talking about during the draft, the synergy, the teamwork for Bizarre Youth, it's there. You can tell they're coordinating these ganks all the time. Oh, I'm pretty nice sure stand. they're also telling Invoker, Invoker, we need Sunstrike up top. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they're making those calls, and nice, it's working. Nice scan by the Radiant, though. They they scanned the site shop, and they realized that there is company there, and they're bringing up a lot of firepower, and Rodki going to be walking into the muscle. Oh, Rodji spots out Yang, and... Looks like we're gonna be strike. losing the bat. The bat's gonna die. Stick charges? No. That's the ogre getting another kill there. Good coordination. Deny it as well. That's a very nice one to get. I have lost onto Maiden. the Crystal Maiden. They slow her down and Crystal Maiden got that frostbite ready. Uh, gonna get called and a dunk as well. And they are looking to push for that lone druid, but I think it might be a little bit too ambitious. If they do kill him though, he just summoned the bear. So that'll be a roughly two minute cooldown on the bear resummon, which Shonix without a bear, he is so vulnerable to getting picked off. So if Bazaar Youth are feeling confident enough, they might consider tower diving, but with the state of their heroes, like Axe is not in a healthy HP range to do this as of yet. And Ogre has, he's got mana, he's got Arcane Boots ready to pop, but I don't know if this is the safest decision. It'll be much better just to back up for them in the time being. I mean, they got a couple of kills already, you know, it started to look bad a little bit during the laning phase when Tihi got solo kill Invoker and their lanes went awry, but now the CM, like I said, you know, she missed that timing because of the aggression that they put out with the Axe and the Ogre. Now she's not as scary as she would have been five minutes ago. Gotta say, we Look might cracks. need to blame the draft for it, but I'll hold my thought for now. No, hey, they got an easy kill here, they might get another easy one here. Uh, WL can lose a lot of his hit points. They're getting bounced back by the Bat Rider as well. Really got to commend Rodki and his proactiveness on his bat. Even pre lasso, pre dagger, he has been making a lot of uh, waves around the map. Just punishing heroes left and right. Just the Napalm doing so much work with these heroes on the side of Bazaar who, when they don't have blink daggers, very immobile, very susceptible to the Napalm uh, turn radius and the slow as well. But, um,. Yeah, back on to the, the point with the Crystal Maiden. There are drafts where Crystal Maiden it's is just... a dream, right? She just fits into the draft. She has that carry mm -hmm. that can play aggressive with her, that doesn't need that much farm to function. But with this draft, it just feels a little quirky. It functions with the Batrider, but it's not really synergizing with anything else. There's no other hero that's that mana hungry that requires an arcane aura it helps from the Sansar Crystal Maiden. a little bit. Well, oh, you, you can you can allow him to skip the two mana regen talent and get yeah. the thirty five. He can run out of mana with constant hoof storms, but yeah, not really that many hungry heroes. Uh, I, I would say Shadow Fiend is one of them. He raises a lot when he clearing when he's clearing jungles. Uh, there was a point where Shadow Fiend fell out of the meta because of the mana cost increase of Shadow Rays. So CM really helps alleviate a lot of that. But she just doesn't seem to be that that hero that fits the puzzle. So looks like Roger going to be solo defending this middle team on. I don't think he wants to be anywhere around these heroes, and he is trying to stick stick away from the oh. fight in the tree line. They oh, the cold snap! It's uphill. They lose vision. Oh, missing oh. at the high ground. He's going nice to scoot from away. Rocky. He's going to juke. Ow, oh, he jukes it. Perfect. Great play from Roger. And uh, the tier two tower falls to Tihi. So now they're coming in. They're looking to lay down the law here. WL running away. Gets the Fire Blast onto the Shadow Fiend. And Shadow Fiend has Stampede. And they are looking to chase them in from the south as well. Xiang gonna look for that Crystal Maiden pick. He has very low points in the pounds. Oh, oh perfect shot there, Xiang. Now oh, it's no. going to probably snipe out the, the slot, but no, not gonna happen here. The Shadow Fiend getting overrun there by the 
five out of the X. And uh, they still kind of hit him down. Shionix gets that kill. There's the shrine. They will top themselves off. And in the end, favors uh, Bazaar. I, I have to say, maybe there was a slight misplay there from Crimson. I do believe he would have been able to get away if he juked behind the bear. But he sort of stood there. Do you think there was maybe a misclick from the Crystal Maiden? Maybe trying to, to click on the... Could be maybe he resigned himself to fate already. Uh, but yeah, definitely could have juked away with that timely Savage roll. Uh, might, even, might even have gotten the, the Slark kill. I think he was trying to bait the Slark back yeah, in so that maybe. the Lone Druid got a kill as well. But now... They're trying to eke forward and get a pick off on this lone druid, and so he's gonna send the bear to check. And there they're going in. Oh, a surprise blink dagger here from Velo. Gonna find that invoker frostbite as well. No ghost walk gonna happen here. And now the bear is there with that savage roll. Maybe yeah, pulls away four of their heroes. Oh, when in trouble, when. doesn't have enough for them. Dunk actually he's on cooldown, so they do not get the centaur. He they're... will die anyway. Oh hey, so the he takes to the DOT. All right, yeah. dies to the DOT. But, uh, Batrider has an arcane root High ground as win. well as the lasso. Does he use it though? He's getting chain stunned and, and a multi cast. Really unfortunate that he got it. And the dunk from when takes out the bear. That's 300 gold more than a hero is worth at this point. 10 second cooldown. This is not too bad for Shonix. He still has access to a bear. But it's money for X though. Exactly. 300 gold is a lot this early on. So. I think, I think I've seen Shonix lose the bear to Bizarre Youth Heroes, I think two or three times so far. Mm -hmm. And for 12 minutes in, that's 900 gold. That's nasty, that's uh, that's quite a few towers. <laughs> a few towers, that's a lot of towers. It's yeah, a few towers, and a half. But um, Bazaar, 10 and 8, they are leading. Geek Fam had a solid, you know, I would say they had a solid lead early and then started to crumble when they fed kills the sun strikes just not counting for sun strike it's coming to play now uh, losing their lives there so rocky is now going to retire to the jungle and get his blink dagger before doing anything else funny honestly i think for geek fam they may need to consider playing a little more aggressive here they're still trying to farm up onto tihi he wants to get the shadow blade which wow well, they're gonna call the bear that is uh that is ballsy. a very ballsy play, but meanwhile the Slop is chasing the Batrider. They try and trying to kill him before he gets that. Oh, before he gets the Blink Dagger, and now they're gonna start up the Slop. Slop doesn't have any mana for now. Ooh. The Ray is gonna be juked there by the Pounce. Very nicely done, and uh, they're gonna cut him off with those beefy, beefy supports there. Bizarre. Oh, gonna find Crimson. This, the Centaur actually jumping in, try and get that Ogre counter kill. They will secure it, and Wen will scoot away with a little bit of life. So. In the end, we get a one for one Crystal Maiden for Ogre. Actually, would have been a little bit better for Villo if he managed to get that Hoof Stomp onto the Invoker as well. Mm -hmm. He was literally on the edge of Invoker's cape. If he got that stun off, I'm very sure Geek Fam would have definitely started the tunnel vision onto the Invoker. Yeah. Getting the Invoker kill there would have been big, but. Uh, Missed opportunity. It, it happens every now and then. It could again. happen now. Rodgy has the Blink Dagger for his lasso and uh, we'll see if they are prepared for this slark having their shadow blade is going to be an extra problem for crystal maiden up under the high ground but i need some vision no, i'm gonna send a bear hello the bear season all right bears oh my god it's a, it's a... they soundtrack the bear that's oh. another 300 oh. gold poor thing 1200 gold so far in favor of uh... this guy is mistreating his pet let's yeah. be real here oh they're gonna lasso the the axe and they're gonna get him should get him should Pulse call it and the annoying. LT. Okay, the LT him. That's that. Okay. Uh, Shuan does have mana for Ghost Walk. And is there dust? Detection? Yes, there is oh. dust. And it's a low level Ghost Walk because this guy is an Exhort Invoker and he does die as a result. So that's a 11 to 11. It's a tie off of the score line. And we have two rather big heroes on Bazaar Youth going down. Very good response for, for Geek Fam. They're executing the draft how they should be. They can't afford to let Bazaar Youth just let their team really do whatever they want because the Invoker has picked up the Hand of Midas as most Invokers do. He's trying to finish up the Ags. If you're able to abuse Team Bazaar's team while their tempo controllers are still trying to accumulate their items, that's a huge opening for Geek Fam to continue taking these towers. Look at the map comparison here for Bazaar as well as Geek Fam. Look at the tower progression. All T1s and a T2 has been taken out on the side of Bazaar Youth. So. 
Whereas Bazaar, they've taken no towers of their own. All T1s are still up. I'm oh, gonna hold my thought here as a fight's know. happening. He's gonna try and stampede around, but that's not gonna save his life. They d deploy Sunstrike and everything else uh, in the kitchen sink. They take out the Centaur, they lose their Initiator in return, and WL might lose his life as well. But the Bear not gonna overcommit and feed another 300 gold. So that's that's going for them. So Centaur for X, I would say another even fight. Pretty, story, pretty much the story of the game. Mm. Back onto the tower progression, Geek Fam have played better. They've actually outplayed Team Bazaar. Even though kills are equal, they are ahead in farm. They're ahead in towers because they're taking objectives. Whereas Team Bazaar, they're more focused on farming, which is fine. But I feel that at some point they need to start chipping some of these towers down because, yeah, they're farming, but the tower gold would help. It would speed up their progression. It would be where it would be a point where at least Chuyan would actually be able to do something. Because it's very limited with what he's able to do right now, just because of the way he's actually building right now. He needs time. Oh, is he going to get picked off is the question. They don't have the vision, so they're going to take the route through the shrine. They might find the ogre instead. But uh, if they pick off the invoker here, he might actually miss that 20 minute mark to get that Agadim Scepter. They're going to come round there. It's the oh, bad rider. No. He doesn't have to fly just yet, like but they're going to jump right onto him. They got him. And they blow him up without the lasso as well. And uh, yeah, I was talking about how invokers usually get their Agadims by 20 minutes after the Midas. He is way past that mark, I think, uh, at this point. He's not going to get it unless he gets some crazy ultra kill. Absolutely beautiful play for a Geek Fam. Great execution. They know the timing for Team Bazaar. They know what they should be abusing, and they're doing it. Plus, plus taking a Roshan on top of this. I don't honestly think Bazaar is going to be able to successfully f fight Geek Fam without critical damage to towers or heroes. I'm actually afraid. I don't think they can contest them at all. They don't have heroes that are able to function in a similar way to the Shadow Fiend, where you can actually do something. Oh, they're going to stampede and look for more targets. They did not use the lasso earlier on, so they're not even going to use it now. They just oh, okay. run it down with Solid Napalm. Under Crimson? Oh, oh no. Gonna, is it going to happen? No, Velo jumps onto the fatty. Gonna try and get him. They go with the frostbite as well, and they munch him down. And that's another hero loss. And when you're down in ages already, you don't want to be losing heroes, because that's when they're gonna start forcing more and more. Oh, the double edge to prevent that blink. Two seconds on that. That's the call. The more hit. All right, disables the blink again. Really wants to keep him out of blink. Uh, blink ability. You could almost say. Oh, okay. Does he predict? Really has to go for the predict. Velo. No. Missing, and uh, the X does port away. So. A little bit of mind games there. The X successfully cutting the creep wave and wasting a little bit of time for his team, so gotta applaud him for that. They've gotta do whatever they can to stall this game out for Slot. Wow, Batrider. This guy is deep, 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 deep in. That's a sentry ward, which doesn't really offer the vision that he needs. And this but, uh, is... That's gonna be a Rubik, that's gonna be an easy pickings, and uh, yeah, Lone Druid's just gonna hit him. And uh, the lift comes out, but Shonix already got the kill, so too late. I gotta say the timing on that sentry ward was actually pretty close. But he put the sentry ward down. A few moments later, Rubik put down an observer ward on the high ground. Instant D ward from the CM. Geek fam, they game sense on yeah, another it level. Could be, it could be these guys just scrim each other so much that they just know the play styles, know the movements. And uh, it's not that difficult to predict invoker movements. If you're any kind of C high level pub player, you would know how invoker plays because there's one every game. Yeah. That's very much so either against him or with him, so unless he's banned. So I want to ask you, what is the function of Zhang here? What is he supposed to be accomplishing as a Slark? We know Slark is very good at getting those solo hero pickoffs, but none of that is happening and his team is suffering. What should the Slark be doing? He here? needs a little bit more time. I think BKB is definitely required. There's too much firepower now for Geek Fam. The thing about Slark is he gets stronger as the team fight progresses, so he needs the ability to stay. Uh, stay in the fights then. Uh, getting lassoed here is definitely not part of the play. There is a Dark Pack. They stomp on him. They know that this one is down and they immediately rush him down with that Crystal Maiden. Oh, man. That was painful. That was a perfectly timed ambush and now they're going for that Shadow Fiend. They might get him with the Sun Strike. That's the Cold Snap as well. Do they have the vision though? The Meteor will find the Invoker. The Raindrop will not find him. And now the Dust and the first hit. Rude, good bear, good boy. Finds the Invoker and they lasso him just to be sure. They take him out and uh, it's Slark and Invoker down for a Shadow Fiend. Not the worst trade for Bazaar, but they are running away with that Stolen Sempeed. That was probably the best trade Bazaar could honestly ask for. 
That's I think that's the best hero that they've killed all game. They've been getting a couple of nice little pickoffs here and there, but no major core heroes. They get a kill streak as well, but it doesn't equalize the gold that they lost from losing Invoker and the Slark. So I honestly do not see high ground being an easy task for Team Bazaar. Their invoker is not ready for defense. He, he's got one more component left, but yeah. clearly you want to be saving the latest, buyback. Latest acronyms I've seen all all day. Mm. Usually it's done by twenty minutes, and uh, this is uh, way behind schedule. The I think one of the good things about Crystal Maiden is also her ultimate is really strong against the slot because of the attack speed slow, the slow is just a big AOE. Slot can't out heal a uh, crystal. So, uh, can he out heal a freezing field? If he gets and hit with the uh, with enough of the freezing field drops, I guess. Yeah, he cannot heal it. One of it, uh, one of that, and uh, second thing is he is unable to actually hit fast enough because of the slows it comes out. So it's a it's a oh. little things that impede him. It makes the single singular support kill really hard for him to get uh, the shadow blade away. Means that he will waste time of bizarre youth. Oh, Blank hole. Oh, Rubik finds an invisibility rune. But yeah, Invoker finally picks up that Aghanim Scepter. If Bazaar wants to have any chance in this game, I think they need to stay in the game for the next 15 minutes at least without any major, uh, major hero, hero deaths. That's easier said than done, unfortunately, but... Yeah, Bat Rider and Centaur are always uh, looking to find you and that Shadow Blade on the SF or even the Silver Edge, actually. Oh, nice Sentry Ward. Scout him out, and I think Shadowfiend saw the Rubik. I'm not sure if he did. Uh, no, he didn't. He instantly went back up north, so I don't believe he did. It is night time as well, so vision is hindered for both sides. It's not going to be easy ganking it in the middle of the night. But Zheng still Aegis farming away. Yep. Good news there for Bazaar, waiting at the Aegis, not losing any T3s in the process. Scardi finished up on Shonix. So damn tanky on this bear. Not even the bear, just the person. Yeah, usually usually your main main counter is to get jumped on, but when you're so high on elbow, oh, blocks the pounce perfectly from that uh, Santa War Runner. And uh, this is why the horse is picked. Even the fish deemed uh, super strong by most pubbers. Okay, picked off. And now it's high ground, I think. Without slot, 41 seconds, you at least want to force out that buyback. AG's or not. And oh, the axe goes in, and as the Crystal Maid is deploying that ultimate, slot buys back into the game. But when it's dropping so low, he gets brought down by the pseudo sniper. Oh, bear kill? Can yeah. I get the bear? Nope. No. Bear Just is pass. at 75. It's bounced back, and uh, he will live to fight another day. Oh, slot Rodney. buyback, though. They see him. DP. Okay. Crystal feed in. Huh, three kill streak ended on the Crystal Maiden as well. I'm wondering how much gold they would have gotten at the end of the day. Three, two, one. What a pleasant number. Six, four, nine on my screen. Six, four, nine. Yeah, six, four, nine as well. Yeah, getting two kills. They get the Shadow Fiend. I think that was the biggest one. Yeah. The Shadow X Fiend. call. Suicidal X call. Almost, off. almost getting the Centaur. If they got the Centaur as well, that would have been an added bonus. Of that course. was very close. But, but they now, got the bear. Now they have bonus. the eggs. Now they have the eggs. It's uh, the time for messing around is over. The Hastrun. Was it Hastrun? No, it wasn't Hastrun. It's so Bounty. They were looking for a pull. Oh. What's gonna happen here? Julian's <laughs> looking a bit better. You said the eggs is done. He's also finished up a blink dagger. Mm -hmm. So this is where there's gonna be some pressure applied to Julian where he needs to work. He needs to be like Raging Potato earlier today, where his team really needed the tempo. And I think this is where it's going to come in. If Trian's unable to perform here, I think it might just be game. Because the rest of their team cannot hold out this assault from Geek. The only thing that was actually saving them was that high ground defense. If they fail one high ground defense, kiss your axes goodbye, because you're running up against a bear. Yep, and um, Invoker needs to hit 25 before he has that absurd tornado cooldown to stop the creep wave from coming in. But before that 25, it's very easy to get shut down, especially when your invoker is lacking items. Blink Dagger means that you're really desperate for that mobility. Usually you want to get some comfort stuff like Yules, maybe Force Staff, or even just working into your Oxrine core right away. Even even Boots of Travels would have been pretty mm -hmm. good. Extra movement speed, being able to TP Rat all over potential. the map as well. Exactly, yeah. So, to think that he's cut out the Boots of Travels, it goes to show how hard of a game it has been for Chuyan so far. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a rough invoker game. Too many 
jumpers. But looks like Geek Fam, they're not feeling too confident to go high ground. They already know what's happened last time and they don't want it to happen again. So obviously Roche is going to be a priority target for Geek Fam. But for Team Bazaar, I actually don't think they care because this is extra time. This is more time for the Slark as well as the Invoker to slowly catch up and to eventually hit a peak where they can contest a lot of the cores on the side of Geek Fam. Arcane Rune on the Batrider. It's a small little buff if you get the lasso now. You can get another one quick, but... Small little thing, as the lasso's already got a short cooldown. Yeah, good luck for Invoker. This is uh, close enough. Nope. Invoker. Oh, Centaur ult. Basically, maybe they were going, but then... Yeah. Why oh, Invoker very quick, and that's why he got the Blink Dagger. You know, really yeah. wants that instant response to a initiation. Xiang, working towards the Lincoln Sphere, I think that's going to be important for him. Allow him to get that uh, survivability right away. And, uh, actually... oh, they're going to find Xiang right away. And yep, they jump on him. Is that going to be enough? They double edge and there's a lasso required. Oh no, the dark pack does keep him alive now. Oh, they bounce on him. Yep, not going to be enough. No stuns, nothing. And a slight mistake there. Giving him a little bit of opportunity to pop that dark pack. Removing that lasso in time. Why is it worth been a really big kill? Would have been a really big kill. May have actually initiated a high ground push for Geek Fam. I'm pretty sure they're just waiting for one pick off to go high ground. Heck, even maybe one pick off just to go for a Roche, but then again, I don't see Bazaar contesting Roche at all. If they see Roche happening, I'm pretty sure it's just a free Aegis. Just more time for Chuyan as well as his buddy here, Xiang, to continue farming to eventually reach critical mass. LT building to that BKB just really want to be able to resist a lot of that invoker spell spamming. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. If you can avoid a lot of the invoker damage, that's pretty much all Bazaar has for damage. Yeah. Like the Slark is not jumping into the middle of the fight. He's only going for those backline pickoffs. It's mostly the invoker doing a lot of the heavy lifting. And uh, Roshan is up, so it's going to be an Aegis for the Dio. I don't believe the Radiant have any tools to contest this, so they're going to take the time to farm up when babysitting the slot. Maybe they can... T this, this this bottom T one's actually ready to uh, ready to take. It's 58 HP left, so... A little boost in gold here for Bazaar Youth, that'll be nice. Even though they're giving away Roche. Or they don't even hit it with their hero, they just give it to the Creeps. Yeah. Rip and Pepperoni Tower. Well, at least I managed to take all the T1 towers so far. Rocky, nice little influx of gold. Rocky, find, uh, pick up that gem of true sight now. So not gonna have anything escape his vision. You're gonna have that observer what he watered right away. It's all the little things, Shionix, that kind of carry. That shoots the wards from under his supports. All right, how much work will Chuyan be able to do to hold this high ground defense for his team? It's not gonna be easy. Shionix is tanky. He can hit the tower for free and he can send the Baron later, or just keep it there. Oh, just get ready for a Savage rider. Roar. Running in, looking for that Invoker. Oh, Chuyan's on that tree line. Oh, oh let's oh, him Chuyan. the four stop as well. The Stampede, perfect! The Stentar with the damage reduction as well as that buffer in the front line. Xiang immediately retreating from that Raccoon wind-up. Look at Shrinks! got to be cancelled in right He's away. He's still hitting Cancel. the tower! Alright, I'm just gonna hit you and you and Savage Roar. Very nicely done. Bouncing away the Ogre, but the buyback from Shu uh, Shuan. Uh, has been used, so very unfortunate that he had to use it there. Really wanted to save up for that. Uh, really wanted to save up for that boot to travel in the end. Not going to be able to buy himself a pair of shoes. Man, Shonix just went all out on that tower. He said, it's okay, you guys can fight. I'm just going to keep hitting the tower. And I've break it down. And I've ages. Yep. So, no biggie. Even if I die, that's that 40 second respawn timer reduction. <laughs> Easy peasy. And oh, they're gonna go for the call. They're taking the aggressive move here. Bazaar Youth, they might lose their invoker again. He's dropping really low. The Crystal Maiden letting it go. That's two heroes on the sidelines. Just the buyback from X. The Ogre Fall. The slot tumble is wound. And that's without buyback as well. The Requiem. Okay, no. Okay, the SF actually does fall to the X tick. But uh, in the end, it's still a big fight loss there. They're gonna call on to 
the Lone Druid, he's Scotty slowing down the X. The Blade Mill doing quite a fair bit of damage to the Lone Druid himself, but the Lasso is there, locking the X in position. He's still spinning. The Roots come out. The Savage Roll pushes away the Ogre, and they get him. The X buyback is down. The Rubik is dead, and WL, the last to fall beyond got like Lone Druid making the hero look broken as heck. And, Even uh, reverting to no bear buyback. form to survive the bear ticks, the burn ticks. Yeah. And, They're uh, gonna lose their whole base. This, yeah. this is it. That one team nah, fight is, just is. dictated the game. GG, yep. There yeah. They were doing thinking like, mm, let's do the calculations. 30 seconds, bear uncontested. Yeah, yeah, he's got the base. But uh, yeah, it's uh, I would say I would say it's pretty unexpected. We did say that this was an even match going in. Kind of like uh, Geek Fam just outplayed Team Bazaar full stop. Even though I would say the Bat Rider is MVP. I think yeah. Terence was asking me who the MVP was on Geek Fam the last series I cast it. Bat Rider. Reggie. Just yeah. knows how to make that hero work even before Blink, even before Lasso. I've never seen such uh, such.